Hello everyone, welcome to Apti Plus Academy for Civil Services. This is a video on daily news and editorial analysis, which I'll be covering from the Hindu and Indian Express. It's the most important news and editorial of the day that is relevant for both prelims and mains examination of civil services will be discussed in this session. Let's get started with the news topic list. Today is 27th of September. The first important news that is center pushes for homegrown navigation system. Second, a push for semiconductor industries. This is from the text and context page of the Hindu. Third, Supreme Court takes a big step on transparency. Fourth, center defers new foreign trade policy. We'll see the detail about this as well. And the last is an editorial pitching India as a signature destination. Apart from the news and editorial discussion, at the end of this video, there will be MCQ based questions. These questions will be based on current affairs that will help you for the upcoming prelims examination. So without any further delay, let's get started. And before I proceed, if you're new to our channel, do not forget to subscribe Apti Plus Academy for Civil Services on YouTube. If you like this video, if you find this video helpful and informative, do not forget to press a like button as well. So starting with the first news, uh, that is Center Process for Homegrown Navigation System. Something important for General Studies Paper 3, that is Achievement in Science and Technology, Navigations of technology and development of new technology. So the union government is pushing the tech giants to make smartphone that is compatible with India's indigenous or homegrown navigation system, which is named as NAVIC, stand for Navigations with Indian Constellations. Right? Within a month, the government has asked that jitni bhi mobile phone manufacturers hai, wo India ke NAVIC navigation system jo hai, usko apne mobile mein enabled karke. Now, the decision by the center is a cause of worry for mobile tech giants like Samsung, Xiaomi, Apple, which is has a huge base customer base in India and who fear that the cost and disruption as a move will require the hardware changes, which is going to be uh, ultimately ending the cost increase in the purchase unit and the customer has to be at the cost of it. Now, reducing dependence on the foreign system, this is what government of India has categorically noted. So the union government aimed to reduce the dependence on foreign system that include the US global processing system that is GPS. The Bhatkare, China, European Union, Japan, Russia, some of the countries are also the part of it which use the navigation system and they have opposed the GPS part as well. Now in line with the Prime Minister drive for the self-reliance, India has over the years expanded the use of regional navigation satellite NAVIC and this is something which India is looking forward with, with all the units that are being sold in India. Now, India has over the year expanded the use of its regional navigation system or the navigation with India's constellations, that is NAVIC. Now, according to the government, the NAVIC provides more accurate navigations and use are likely to benefit the economy. So it is indigenously providing more sort of benefits to India itself. Now, what is NAVIC? This is an independent standalone navigation satellite system developed by ISRO. This is something very important. This can be relevant for many other competitive examination as well, apart from UPSC civil services prelims examination. Now, initially it was developed in 2006. A total cost is $174 million and NAVIC was expected to be completed by 2011. However, it has become fully operational in 2018. It consists of eight satellite covers India landmass that is 1500 kilometers from its boundaries. I'm talking about the uses of NAVIC. So NAVIC uses tracking system in our country, the vehicle tracking system, provide emergency warning alert for fishermen ventures into the deep seas and providing information related to the natural disaster. Now rebuilding India, the Bhatkare, Kaskarke Naviki, the autonomous regional satellite navigation system set up by India and provide accurate real time positioning and timing services over India and the regional expanding to 1500 km around the India. So, this is the area upon which the coverage of the Navic will be and it will be giving more impetus in India's navigation system. Now, how does the Navic compare? Basically, the Bhatkare is the main differences is serviceable. A serviceable hai area covered by this system while the GPS scatter the use across the globe and its satellite circle each twice the day NAVIC is currently used in India at its adjacent area. Moving to the other news that is push for the semiconductor industries. This particular news is important for general studies paper 2 
that is government policies and intervention for the development of various sectors and issues arising from its design and implementations. So recently, the Union Cabinet has approved the modification in the scheme for the development of semiconductor and display manufacturing ecosystem in our country. Although government has pulled its all best impetus in building the semiconductor ecosystem in our country, the efforts are made in a bid to make India 10 billion chip making initiative and attract more investor to our country and even call for more Indianization in the semiconductor manufacturing. Semiconductor industries, semiconductor industries are the thumbnail sized building block are almost every modern electronics required the semiconductor, be it smartphone, any internet of thing, objects, everything is connected with a semiconductor and they give the conceptual provide and device basically if you talk conceptualization if you talk device is always requiring a product called semiconductors right so the global semiconductor industries is currently valued around 500 to 600 billion dollars now looking into this important aspect of this graph this can give you an idea that how the CAGR for this industries is growing for past like 2020 it was only 17.1% which has rose up to 92.13%, right? And if analysis carry area wise, so this is for the north, south, east and west region, right? And these are the companies that are operating and application segment overview. This is for 27, 25, 23 and 2020. Components of semiconductor, the basic component of semiconductor is a silver of silicon which is attached with a billion of microscope transistor forming a pattern to control the flow of current while flowing through different computation instruction. So you must have seen the semiconductor it has a lot of microscopic transitions which actually transit the messages and even the electronic currents. The chip making process is a complex process it's highly extract having a multiple steps in supporting the chain designing software for chips and patenting them through a core intellectual property rights. So in India, definitely if it is indigenously developed, India will be looking forward with the IP rights conservation as well. Global manufacturing of semiconductors, the chip industry is highly concentrated or kuch big giants, Taiwan, South Korea and US are among the major countries. So for many other competitive examinations, these three names of the country are important. First is Taiwan, South Korea and United States. Now, in fact, the New York Times has estimated that 90%, that is 5 nanometers chips are produced in Taiwan. And Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company is the largest manufacturer. Therefore, the global shortage of the US-China tension over the Taiwan can even lead for the blockage of the supply chain. And Russia and Ukraine is a conflict. That's why the major economies are in the supply chain. Mein kafi jada issues hai. Even that is the reason the semiconductor in India is costing on a higher side. Now changes to uh, India's chip marketing scheme, government of India, this number 2021, mein, which important decision, li, usme sabse important decision hai PLI scheme, that is the production length incentive scheme, which called for a $10 billion productions and encourage the semiconductor and manufacturing industries. It has announced a fiscal support, that is the DLI design link incentive scheme to provide impetus to the global and domestic investment in our country that include the software and IP rights as well. Now, according to the electronics and IT ministry, semiconductor demand in India would increase by 70 to 80 billion by 2026 and the growing demand for the digital service electronic is on higher side. So it is being anticipated that this sector has a huge potential to give basically the growth and even provide contribution to the overall GDP. Now, the latest changes that was announced by the government is to harmonize the government incentives and technology knots in the semiconductors. The previous version, agar baat kare, jo purani versions hai, central government has offered 30% of the project cost for the 45 nanometers. Uske alave, 65 nanometers ki jo chip ki production se, usme 30% tak ki government ne version mein offering diya. 40% for 28 to 45 nanometers and 50% to half of the funding, the chip is manufactured by 28 nanometers. So according to size, government is providing subsidy on the percentage basis. Now the modification scheme provides for uniform 50% of the fiscal support to all nodes. So baad mein jo modification hui, usme sare nanometers ke sizes ke liye uniform discount ya fir offering ki gai hai. We're talking about the exemptions that has been given. So that is 
fifty percent of the fiscal support. Now, beside this, it will provide fifty percent of the capital expenditure on the other steps of the processing with the chip and ATM. Now, what challenges are there? Chip industries के साथ the chip production is a source of incentive and excessive process. Notably, अगर बात करें setting up of a semiconductor industries require a investment which is close to three billion to seven billion. So it's a uh, basically an uh, industry that has a lot more investment initially required. This has a potential, but the setup ki cost is also quite high. The chip making requires a gallon so of ultra pure water in a single day, which expert says that it could ask for the government to provide factories and compounded also with the drought condition, which can drought prevent the large part of the country. So this way, say drought, just say uh, basically disasters can be caused, but something like that. Now, Supreme Court takes a big steps on transparency. Something important for Gender Studies paper to structure organization and functions of executive and judiciary. Chief Justice of India has recently said that the Supreme Court will soon have its own live streaming platform, and this has promoted a lot more transparency in the proceedings of the Supreme Court. The Chief Justice of India. Few days after he was have a meeting with another senior officers and Supreme Court judges, they have said that the right to information portal will also be revamped so that the citizen are getting access to an easy basis. Now the comment on this effect come after the court proceeding, which was looking into the important matters of the constitutional bench. Basically, two benches are there in Supreme Court. The one is the divisional bench, and the other is the constitutional bench. Right? Now the lawyer mentions matter. Suggested that the Supreme Court should secure the copyright proceedings and intended to stream on the YouTube because YouTube में अभी भी कुछ ऐसी copyright की issues हैं जो कि clash करेंगे Supreme Court के performance के साथ तो Supreme Court ने एक अपनी live streaming की platform बनाने की भी बात की है in a longer. However, the Supreme Court has noted that the SC will have its own platform soon. Now, live streaming of the constitutional bench की अगर बात करें, so on September 22 the full The Supreme Court ने कहा है that unanimously they have decided to begin the process of the bench that is from 27th September from today itself they will start and currently the Supreme Court of India is hearing an important constitutional matter that includes the constitutional 100 amendment which provide for 10% reservation in the constitutional to the weaker section right so these are some of the important point or important uh, cases that Supreme Court will be looking into in live stream. Now, some of the constitutional bench that has also stated Bora Committee, Community Rights and Ex Communications. Its के बारे में भी live streaming होगी. Adequate of adequacy of Bhopal tragedy compensation, which is long pending. Retrospective applications of immune against arrest. Validity of All India Bar Association and extent of Supreme Court power to directly hear the cases. So these are some of the important cases which is before the constitutional bench of the Supreme Court, and these matter will be as soon live telecast. Promoting transparency, this move by Supreme Court by the Chief Justice of India will definitely call for the promotion of transparency, uh, which was again a big negative feedback from 2015 itself. The court has struck down the National Judicial Appointment Commission's 99 constitutional amendment. Co Supreme Court ne invalid bataya tha aur usko kharch kiya tha. Now, both after much of the judgment, they have also shown that the court has invited public opinion and ways to impress opaque collegium system of judicial appointment. Now, moving to the other news, Centre differs new foreign trade policy. Something important for Gender Studies paper three, that is Indian economy and issues related to planning, mobilisation, resource growth and development. So, the central government has recently extended the tenor for the foreign trade policy. जो कि 2015 से 2020 तक ही वैलिड थी गवर्नमेंट ने इसको बाद में भी एक्सटेंड किया पहले भी और भी एक्सटेंड किया हुआ है बट नाउ इट हैज एक्सटेंडेड टू मोर सिक्स मंथ राइट इट वाज सपोज्ड टू एक्सपायर इन 2020 बट बिकॉज ऑफ द कोविड 19 इट वाज फर्दर एक्सटेंडेड बाय ईयर एंड हाफ एंड नाउ इट इज अगेन एक्सटेंडेड बाय सिक्स मंथ एंड दिस विल बी कंटिन्यूइंग टिल मार्च ट्वेंटी राइट आफ्टर विच ओनली अ न्यू ट्रेड पॉलिसी इज एक्सपेक्टेड बाय द गवर्नमेंट एंड Now, why government has not uh, come up with a new policy? Because it says that the global economic condition is not stable, or such volatile geopolitical situations are amid the war which is going against Russia and Ukraine, supply chain disruptions, currency depreciations. की बात की गई है जिस तरह कि U.S. Fed ने 
जो अपने इंटरेस्ट रेट बढ़ाई है उसके ध्यान में रखते हुए एनी वेल द डिविलिंग एक्सपोर्ट दीज आर सम ऑफ द मेन फैक्टर अपॉन विच द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट हैज नॉट कम अप विद फॉरन ट्रेड पॉलिसी Now the current policy of the trade uh, 2015 is operational and will expire on 30th of September 2022 but it has extended for 6 more months that is for March 2023 As per the ministry the government has received the request from the Export Promotion Council and the leaders of the exporter have said that they wanted to continue with this policy which has been extended over time and again तो कंटिन्यू पोस्टपोनमेंट हुई है एज आई टोल्ड इन द बिगनिंग एंड ना फॉर इट हैज एन एक्सटेंडेड टू मार्च 2023 एंड टॉकिंग अबाउट द पॉलिसी बिकॉज ऑफ द कोविड 19 एंड अनस्टप्टेड सिचुएशन द थिंग्स वर वर्स्ट नाउ द पॉलिसी हैज सब्सिक्वेंटली एक्सटेंडेड फॉर 6 मंथ एंड एफटी हैज लेड द ऑब्जेक्टिव एंड स्ट्रेटजी टू बूस्ट इंडियाज एक्सपोर्ट रिड्यूस द इंपोर्ट डिपेंडेंस एंड क्रिएट मोर जॉब्स द मर्चेंडाइज एक्सपोर्ट्स डेटा की अगर बात करें अकॉर्डिंग टू द लेटेस्ट डेटा from the ministry of commerce it says that the merchandise exports in august has shown 2% increase aur yahan pe growth estimations ki baat kare this is 33.92 billion right with import surge by 37.28% now during this period india export to china fell sharply because we are more focusing on indianization of our technology and even for export part we are more into indianization so yahan pe 35% tak decrease dekhi gayi hai that is 6.8 billion from august compared to 10.5 billion in the last year for the same period the crude oil prices ki agar baat kare although the crude oil prices has eased to a greater extent the depreciation of rupee hui against the dollar is one of the reason for the surging import and india is currently the third largest consumer of the fossil fuel this is again factually important and it uh, india import almost 85% of the crude oil and pay amount in dollar which is impacting our forex reserve as well and benchmark brent crude oil ki agar baat kare to a 9 month low it is 84.51 which has recently over the dollar and recession concern now moving to the editorial of the day that is pitching india as a signature destinations this is an editorial which is relevant for general studies paper 2 that is the government policies and intervention for the development of various sectors and issues arising from a design and implementation this editorial has been written by minister itself and this provide a road map for india's tourism sector so theme ki agar baat kare is editorial ki national tourism policy 2022 ke bare mein baat ki gayi hai and i'll be simplifying this editorial by five important subheads that include dharmsala declarations india's mission abroad road map for tourism sector government ki kya kya important measures hai isko lekar ke aur last mein kya government ne goal set ki hai is policy ke through so we'll figure out each and everything one by one so let's get started with the part of first that is the dharmsala declaration but before that a background on this so recently a three day conference was started and this conference was named as state tourism minister conference which was organized in dharmsala by the ministry of tourism itself the venue is again important for many other competitive examination they can ask you the venue so the venue is dharmsala which is in himachal pradesh so this is first of its kind meeting to discuss the debate deliberate on the mode of mechanism to develop tourism in our country or national tourism conference ki agar baat kare they saw the participations from various stakeholders which include ministers from various states governor administrator of the union territories and the senior government officers of the government of india right so the union minister of the tourism has urged all the states to adopt a best practices to boost the tourism sector in our country now dharmsala declarations ki agar baat kare it aims to recognize india's role in contributing the global tourism focusing on recovery part jahan pe covid 19 ke baad jis tarah se hospitality sector tourism sector deteriorate hui hai usko recovery ke liye bhi plan ki gayi hai the dharmsala declaration call for sustainable and responsible tourism it plans to encourage the domestically explored natural cultural and spiritual beauty jahan pe ek bharat श्रेष्ठ भारत की बात की गई है इंटरक्शन एंड म्यूचुअल अंडरस्टैंडिंग इज ऑल्सो इंपॉर्टेंट इन दिस रिगार्ड नाउ इंडिया मिशन अब्रॉड की बात करें इन पैरल द मिनिस्ट्री हैज ऑल्सो बिन वर्किंग विद द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एक्सटर्नल अफेयर्स टू आइडेंटिफाई ट्वेंटी इंडियन मिशन अब्रॉड विद द हाइएस्ट टूरिस्ट फुटफॉल इन आर कंट्री विद स्पेसिफिक स्ट्रैटेजीज फॉर द फॉरन टूरिस्ट नाउ अकॉर्डिंग टू द डिक्लेरेशन इंडिया प्लान टू पोजिशन इट सेल्फ इन अ मेजर टूरिस्ट डेस्टिनेशन दैट इज इंडिया also going to chair the G20 meeting uh, by 
दिस ईयर ओनली इस ईयर के एंड में जी ट्वेंटी की मेंबरशिप मिली है इंडिया को जो कंटिन्यू होगी नवंबर 2023 तक तो इस टाइम पे एक इंडिया के पास अपॉर्चुनिटी है कि कई फॉरेन डेलीगेशन जो इंडिया आएगी वो इंडिया टूरिज्म को भी प्रमोट करेगी सो वी नीड टू बी प्रिपेयर फॉर दैट पार्ट एज वेल Now, roadmap for the tourism sector, which was decided in the NTP, that is the National Tourism Policy. So, Ministry of Tourism has a wide consultation and have prepared the draft plan, which aims to improve the framework conditions for the tourism development in our country, supporting tourism, strengthening the tourism functions, and even developing the tourism sectors. Now, National Tourism Policy aims to give impetus in digitalizations, innovation, technology, national digital missions through. स्किलिंग एंड टूरिज्म हॉस्पिटैलिटी सेक्टर तो ये एक ऐसी सेक्टर्स है जिसके पास ह्यूज पोटेंशियल है एंड इवन फॉर द टूरिज्म एंड हॉस्पिटैलिटी सेक्टर कैन पे टू जी डी पी कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन और स्किल डेवलपमेंट के थ्रू अभी जो आने वाली टाइम है जो ड्यूरेशन है फॉर लास्ट कंप्लीट मंथ बेसिकली ईयर विल बी एन एक्सपेंशन फॉर द टूरिज्म सेक्टर इन आर कंट्री द पॉलिसी गिव ए स्पेशल इम्पेटेंस टू द प्राइवेट सेक्टर पार्टिसिपेशन सो डेफिनेटली वी नीड अ ट्रिपल पी मॉडल जहाँ पे पब्लिक प्राइवेट पार्टनरशिप के थ्रू इस वैक्यूम को फिल किया जा सकता है तो अगर बात करें फॉरेन ट्रेड पॉलिसी 1520 की तो दो इंपॉर्टेंट स्कीम है जो आपको ध्यान रखनी है द फर्स्ट इज द मर्चेंडाइज एक्सपोर्ट फ्रॉम इंडिया स्कीम एंड सर्विस एक्सपोर्ट फ्रॉम इंडिया स्कीम सो डू चेक इट आउट अब थोड़े से बेसिक्स इसके बारे में देख ले दिस माइट बी रेलिवेंट फॉर द मेन्स एंड द प्रम एग्जामिनेशन एज वेल द गवर्नमेंट के क्या क्या मेजर्स है इन दिस रिगार्ड हाउ गवर्नमेंट इज पुटिंग इट बेस्ट पॉसिबल एफर्ट्स So government has come up with the emergency line credit guarantee scheme which is a value of 50000 crore rupees and 4.5 lakh crore rupees to 5 5 lakh crore benefits will be given to hospitality sector restaurant marriage halls travel agents tours adventures and heritage facilities now the center is bringing necessary intervention which include visas reform ek bahut hi important reform hai jahan pe visa on arrival ki baat ki gayi hai bahut aise countries hain जहाँ पे आप भी ट्रैवल कर सकते हो वीजा ऑन अराइवल यू इनिशियली प्रायर डू नॉट रिक्वायर्ड एनी वीजा यू कैन गेट वीजा वंस यू रीच द प्लेस राइट सो ईज ऑफ ट्रैवल फ्रेंडली इमिग्रेशन फैसिलिटीज एयरपोर्ट्स ओपननेस टू एयर ट्रैवल एंड दीज आर द मेजर टॉपिक्स दैट वेर डिलिब्रेटेड ड्यूरिंग द डिस्कशन दैट टू प्लेस रिसेंटली नाउ गवर्नमेंट ने क्या गोल सेट की है थ्रू द नेशनल टूरिज्म पॉलिसी वॉट आर द गोल दैट हैज बिन सेट so the declaration talk about the national tourism policy which was drafted with a holistic visions and revival of the tourism sector in our country which contribute 1 trillion to the gdp by 2047 when india will be completing 100 year of independence this is expected that is sector se kam se kam 1 trillion ki target puri honi chahiye so this number is again important you can use this figure in your mains examination आप मेंस एग्जामिनेशन में टूरिज्म सेक्टर के बारे में लिख रहे हैं तो आप इस तरह के जो इंपॉर्टेंट फोल्डर पॉइंट्स है वो यहां पे जरूर यूज करें By 2024, the country is estimated to contribute around 150 billions to the GDP. The USD of 30 billion in the foreign exchange earning and 50 million on the foreign arrival and declaration was there. By 2030, India is expected to grow by 7 to 9 percent of the compounded annual growth rate. This figure is again very very important. You have to take a note that India's estimation for the growth sector of tourism is anticipated around 7 to 9 percent. So. this was basically the premise of the editorial and the conclusion of the editorial now moving to the mcq questions of the day before i proceed just to tell you the answers of yesterday questions for first question the correct option was c for second question the correct option was b today's mcq for practice aapko batana hai new umbrella entities ke bare mein only those entities that are owned and controlled by indian citizen at least for 3 years can experience the payment in the segment and promoters of nues no foreign investment in allowed in the existing guideline so do check it out for the correct option and mese kaun se options correct hain second option is about the electoral bond all nationalized bank in india are authorized to in cash the bond valid for 15 days from the date of issuance and these bond are remitable at the designated account of the political parties i think most of you must be aware of this question this is a easy question which you can easily answer So this was all about for the daily news and editorial analysis followed by the MCQ questions if you have any other concern you can let me know i'll be more than happy to assist you for time being i'm signing off thank you so much for watching this video